Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for RESA Live. We go live every Thursday at 11 a.m., so be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button to get notified of all future live videos. My name is Andrew Stevens. I'm an application engineer here at RESA, and one of my many responsibilities I have here at RESA is working in technical support. So chances are, if you've called or emailed our tech support line for assistance in the past few years, you may have talked to me. Uh, today, we're going to cover some, uh, basically show the value of some of the new and redesigned selection tools in RESA 3D and how the tools can increase the efficiency of your modeling workflow. Um, so as you'll notice, I've got a, uh, a model here. I call it my masonry warehouse, even though there is no masonry in here. Uh, but it's just a sample model that I like to use. Um, I've actually designed it and it's got uh, many members in it, so it'll be great for actually showing uh, the selection tools. Now, the reason being uh, that it's great for that is because there are many members in here and it, sometimes it can be hard to actually pick out which ones are which. Uh, as you can see, it gets pretty dense. Um, I'm showing a rendered model right here, but uh, basically for all the selections, we'll go ahead and turn that model rendering off. So here's our typical wireframe. Um, what I'd like to first show you is that uh, even though we have our typical selection tools that we've had in previous versions of RESA, we now have the ability to click and drag to select elements. Now, that being if you click and then you drag to the right, you'll notice that my box is a solid blue box. Now, this means that it will capture anything that is within that box and nothing else. Now, if I click and drag to the left, you'll notice that that box changes to a dashed line. Now, that dashed line means it will pick up anything in the box and also anything that the line crosses through. A good example of this would be if we're looking down at this little section down here with this little roof, if I wanna select just this portion of the model, I would want to drag to my right and select just those elements. Now, what you'll notice, if you click and drag the other direction, it will select many more because the line crosses through them. Now, to unselect items, I usually just hit my escape key, which works, but you can also use the legacy uh, button over here that's to make the entire model unselected. An additional feature to this click and drag is that you can actually press your control button and add to the current selection that you have. And you'll notice that the cursor actually shows up with a positive sign next to it to show that it's going to add items. So if I have those items there selected and then I want to select this wall, I'll hold my control button and I can click and drag and you'll notice that the plus sign showed up next to the cursor. Now say I made a mistake and I didn't really want to select those walls or these members over here, I can use my shift key, click and drag, and you'll notice that the cursor shows with a little minus sign next to it now. So that will unselect those items. Now besides graphical selections, we can also use our spreadsheets in combination with these to make it uh, a little bit easier to select certain items. So what I'm gonna do here, since we have so many members in this model, I'm going to actually open my member spreadsheet. And when I have this member spreadsheet open, you'll notice that if I click my end button on my keyboard, we have over 4,500 members in this model. Now, I may want to sort this model or sort this spreadsheet to make it a little easier to view items that I want say I wanna sort this by section or shape, I just click the column header and it'll select the entire row or the entire column. Then I can right click and I can go down to sort. And I'm gonna sort this by low to high. Now the program's gonna sort the spreadsheet based on this and I want to select all my W21 members. Well, I know W is pretty close to the end of the alphabet, so I'm gonna go right to the end here. So let's go ahead and select all my W21 by 44s. Let's say for some reason, W21 by 44s aren't available right now, and it's been requested that we upsize that. So what I can do is I can actually select the row number 
and it will actually select the entire row for that W21 by 44. Now we have many more, so what I'm gonna also do is I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm gonna scroll up until I see the end of those 21 by 44s and I'm gonna click that row number there. Now, like many other spreadsheet programs, it actually selects that entire series. Now, one really nice thing about the functionality in the spreadsheet is, say I wanna isolate all those W21 by 44s. Like I mentioned, I wanna change the size of all of those. I can actually right click and go to show selected lines in the current view. Now, what this is gonna do is it's going to actually highlight them in my 3D view, all those W21 by 44s. Now, it is a little difficult to still see those, so what I can do is I can actually use what we call our dim lock tool. Now this dim lock tool, for those of you familiar with previous versions of Risa 3D, we had a lock tool and that lock tool would lock the unselected elements of the model out so you wouldn't be able to uh, make any alterations to those or they wouldn't get in your way, it's a little easier to view. Um, but the dim lock tool behaves similar but what it does is instead of removing all the elements that you don't want selected and you want to lock out, it actually dims them. So now you still have a reference of where those elements are in respect to the rest of your model. Now, because there's so many members on this, these trusses, it's still a little difficult to see. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use the full lock tool. And you'll notice it's a lot easier to see those. But like I said before, it's not as easy to see where it is in relation to the rest of your model as the dim lock tool. So now that we have these elements selected, what I'd like to show you now is the ability to use our filter input. Now, just like uh, we added the dim lock tool to the new, uh, the most recent version of Risa 3D, we also added a filter input tool. Now, this is similar to what you may have used in previous versions, which was the exclude tool for results. Well, we've changed the name of this to be uh, filter results instead of exclude results, because we now have the ability to either filter out the selected elements or filter out the unselected elements. Now, we also added the ability to filter the input now. So we can filter results and input. So because I wanted to change the size of all these elements, what I could do is I can select all these elements and I could actually change it one of two ways. I can change it straight from my property panel over here where it shows that I have W21 by 44 is all these members. It shows I have 60 of them selected. Or what I could do is I could filter my input so it shows me, well, it shows me here the options. I could filter out the unselected items from the input, which is what I want in this case. But you could also filter out the selected items if you didn't want to see them in your input spreadsheets. Now I'm going to filter out the unselected. And what you'll notice now is if I open up my member spreadsheet again, now I only have 60 members out of all the other members that I used to have. I believe it was 4,500. So now I have only my 21 by 44 showing in my spreadsheet. So now if I wanted to make any changes to those, I could do it either in my spreadsheets, I could do it in my property panel, and I won't be changing any other element, which could be very useful. Now, one thing I'd like to do is actually show you, well, let's go ahead and actually change those. So I could go up to my section shape and I'm gonna select the whole thing. And I'm gonna, let's just do a fill block by using the spreadsheet command here. And I'm gonna change that to, let's say a W21 by 50 and select okay. Now it changed all those members to 21 by 50. And you'll see that since I selected the column header, it did it to all the members. So now if I go out, and I can actually unselect those and I can turn on my labels just to verify. Actually, I'm gonna click the little drop down here and choose shape. And you'll notice W21 by 50 is chosen for all these members. So that can be kind of handy. Let's go ahead and turn that back off. 
Now let's go ahead and unselect those now. And I'm gonna turn my filter off. It's still filtering my spreadsheet based on the previous selection. So I'm gonna turn that filter off. Gives me a little warning saying that I'm gonna turn my filter off, just in case you didn't wanna do that. Now let's say I wanted to find a very specific member. Um, I believe one that I've previously look, looked for was member M120, 120. And you can member labels here. There's member labels everywhere, especially with these trusses. I've got member labels all over the place and it can get kind of hairy. So what I'd like to do, I'm gonna turn that off. It does get a little bit uh, condensed there. Uh, I'm going to actually use a new tool that we have in this version, which is called our Quick Find. Now it's up here on the uh, home tab of your ribbon and Quick Find. Now this allows you to look for specific elements. Now it could be uh, wall panels, it could be plates, it could be nodes. Basically, as long as you type in the label that is linked to that element, it will find that. So I'm gonna look for member M, M120. Now I wanna only select this member. And I'll show you this tool in just a second here, but if I select just this and say okay, it's gonna highlight it. Now you may be asking where it might be because it's not obvious right off the bat. But what you could do also, which I was avoiding just to show you, is that if I go back to my home tab and I go to quick find, I can actually use this checkbox here that's auto zoom the current model view. Now what this is gonna do, it's going to select it and zoom right up to it. So there's my member. If I go back to my home tab and I change this to show labels, I'll notice this is M120. I'm gonna turn that back off now. Now, another option I wanted to show, and again, we could actually use our dim lock to help us find it as well. There it is. Um, but I'd also like to show a tool right next to Quick Find, which is called Select by Property. Now, let's go ahead and unselect everything. And if I use Select by Property, it brings up this dialog. Now, this is a dialog we've had in the past, but uh, one thing that we have added recently is the ability to select loads. Now, before we had the option to select loads and change them through spreadsheets, um, but now we actually have the ability to select loads themselves and change them on the fly through the property panel. Now, the really nice part about this dialog is it allows us to select based on multiple criteria, and one of which it will actually select the elements that the load is applied to, which can be very handy. Now let's say I wanna look for dead load and I wanna look for all, let's say distributed loads and I want it to look in the global Y direction. Now this is gonna select all the distributed dead loads in the Y direction and show me those elements or those loads. Now it didn't select the elements but if I click this little checkbox here it will select those elements that it's applying to. So you can see that I have some walls and some meat beams that are being applied, uh, those distributed loads are being applied to. But you also have options to overwrite locks and overwrite previous selections. Let's say I wanted to overwrite the previous selection. This is not gonna remember what was selected previously. And let's say we didn't select elements and we go to select it's going to select just the loads and it's gonna forget what was, what was selected previously. Now, one neat tool is if you're, you can use this overwrite lock, we don't have anything locked in our model, but I'll show you that real quick. If I unselect my tool by pressing escape, I can actually, let's say I wanna hide part of my model. I'm gonna lock it out. Let's say this whole bottom section, I'm gonna actually invert. I don't wanna show the bottom section. So I have just the top selection selected. I'm going to lock the model. And so now I only see the top. I'll turn off my loads. Now, if something is applied to the bottom level, well, I can't necessarily see it right now, 
But if I use back in the home tab, this select by property, and I say I want to see the dead load for distributed, same direction, everything. But if I overwrite the lock, it will actually show me the items that were locked out. Now, if I do it now, you'll notice only a few of them show up. But if I overwrite the lock, it will bring those items back in. And if I select elements, I can do that as well. So that can be a handy way of uh, bringing forward things that might be hidden in your model and maybe you want to keep all the other elements on that floor hidden and so forth. So hopefully that uh, helps you a little bit on the selection tools and basically how to use some of those and maybe it'll increase your workflow and make you a little more, more efficient in modeling. Um, also just a, a little plug for our technical support if you don't know. Uh, our technical support is available. Um, you can email us at support at um, with any questions regarding models or engineering questions or any questions that have to do with the program at all. And thank you for watching today.